Hey guys, and welcome to the second episode of Pen Pals. Sorry that it's been a while. We recently had some really severe weather in Queensland, which sort of slowed down the post office a bit, but luckily, we checked the mailbox the other day and found a letter. This week's featured letter comes to us from Eru, who lives in Sydney, and I'm hoping that you don't notice that I've actually dubbed over this in post. So here we have Eru's letter, which gets a lot of style points because, I mean, just look at it. Have you ever seen anything quite like that before? So let's just crack into it and see what's inside. The first thing we see are what look like postcards. The first postcard looks like it's a man and woman facing away from the camera, and they're wearing some really vibrant yellows. So on the back of the card, if this is indicative of the front, this is evidently from an exhibit called Today, Tomorrow, Yesterday at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Sydney. It's open daily, so if you want to see more stuff like the photo and you happen to also live in Sydney, it's open daily from 10 to 5. Up next is a blue card with some digital numbers on it. Doesn't really give me much to talk about, but I guess that's the point. So on the back, it tells us that this is an ad for an exhibit by Tatsuo Miyajima, and he uses LEDs in his sculptures and other works to blend art with technology. Well, that explains the digits on the front. This event has already passed, so unfortunately you may have missed out, but if anyone's watching and actually went to it, tell me how it was in the comments. He's got a hashtag here on the side of the card. I think I'll tweet this and just see what happens. So finally, and I really like this, it's some men sitting around a card table and the text says, China is not ruled by Chinese anyway. I find this fascinating for some reason, and I'm sure that the sentiment applies to a lot of countries. On the back of this one, there isn't much to say, but this is from something called White Rabbit, which seems to be a separate thing from the Museum of Contemporary Art like before. But that's all for the cards. We just have Eru's letter to read now, so let's get right into it. Hi Nate, I heard about your channel idea on Reddit and I thought it sounded super cool. I hope you get a few letters from a few people. I'm not interesting enough to sustain a channel. So to introduce myself, my name is Eru. I'm 17, currently in high school, and my favorite subjects are Extension English, Japanese, and Textiles. I volunteer at an art gallery and the Fashion and Technology Museum here. I'm sending you a few exhibition cards. I think I own too many. Two are from the Museum of Contemporary Art, and one is from the White Rabbit Gallery. Those two are my ultimate favorite galleries here, and I really appreciate that they exist. How about you? What are the places around you that you appreciate? What do you do? Introduce yourself to me. One of my favorite places around where I live would have to be at the Brisbane Lookout at Mount Kutha. It's always really relaxing for me to travel up here, both for the stellar view of Brisbane City, but also because of the mountain air. It can get stifling sometimes living in the city, but the Gold Coast isn't actually too bad. Mount Kutha is usually several degrees cooler than being at sea level though, so on a hot day in the middle of summer, it's great to come up here and have a bit of a reprieve. It also helps that there's an ice cream shop at the top. Mount Kutha is definitely one of the places around me that I appreciate the most. If you're ever around Brisbane, I highly recommend checking it out, especially at night time. By the way, I'm sorry I got to this letter late. I got inundated with schoolwork and stuff. That probably isn't interesting, but whatever. So, something interesting, I guess. I really wanted to participate in this thing because I found it interesting. It was interesting to me because it takes something archaic, letter writing, and something modern, YouTube, and blends them together for something beautiful. Both are great communication methods, but one is considered old and unnecessary. No one does it anymore. This idea that you have takes something that is usually private and archaic and turns it into something public and new and shiny. It takes something that only old people do. Hey, Crystal. Yeah? Do you think I'm old? Uh, do you want the truth? And takes it to a medium that everyone uses. It's beautiful and unifying and has the potential to be something great. Thanks for reading this, albeit short, letter. Hopefully, I'll have more time and content to write on and we'll exchange letters and become good friends. Hopefully this won't have fountain pen smudges all over it and my writing is legible. Hope to hear from you soon, Eru. Well Eru, there weren't any smudges, so that's a plus. 
Your handwriting combined with the cupcake background took a little getting used to, but we got there in the end, so it's all good. That was pretty cool paper though, and I'm glad you used it. It fit the overall quirkiness of your letter perfectly. I'm writing you back, so expect a letter in the mail very soon. You do live locally after all, so it shouldn't take too long to get there. You wanted me to introduce myself, but I can't give everything away all at once, so I'll tell you one cool fact about me, I guess. I played Guitar Hero 3 when it very first came out, and I eventually got pretty good at it. Shortly after that, Rock Band came out, and I took up the drums. Playing those drums inspired me to join my local high school band, where I was taught how to read and play music properly, and now I can actually play the drum set reasonably well. Isn't it pretty cool how your seemingly insignificant hobbies can sometimes really alter your life? Outside of that, if you want to know more about me, I made an intro video a couple weeks ago that sums up a few key points about me. If anyone else hasn't seen it, I'd recommend checking it out too. So Easter just recently passed, and I thought it might be a good time to bring up another fun fact about Australia. But this time I suppose it's more of a fun fact about America, really. Kinder Surprise Eggs are illegal in America, but they're completely legal in Australia. I suppose that's not really a fun fact if you live in the US. I don't know, it's all about perspective. Anyway, there's a reason why they're illegal in the States, and the reason why is not what you may think. It's because they're very dangerous, and they can attack at any time. So, we must deal with it. Maybe I was just looking for a reason to smash a chocolate bunny with a hammer. Anyway, the real reason they're illegal is because of this. There's a little capsule inside that contains a toy. And the US has laws that there can't be anything that's not food inside of food. So there's your not very fun fact about the US. So are these toys worth the $2,500 fine if you're caught with one in the States? Well, no. I'd be very upset if I got stung with that fine. Look at this thing, it's just a plastic rabbit holding a flower. What do these instructions say anyway? Touch the flower? It's just a felt flower. It doesn't even do anything. This is the worst toy ever. We've got a big one over here though, with a giant surprise inside. I wonder what the surprise will be. Anyway, we're back, and this is what was inside. Now. Maybe this will be much more interesting than the bunny toy, I hope. It looks to be one of the exact toys that was on the tag. What a giant surprise! I can't make heads or tails of how to put this together though. I obviously can't read the instructions to figure it out. What is this supposed to instruct me to do anyway? I haven't had the practice with these kinder toys. They're illegal where I grew up. Uh, I'm gonna have to get the help of the locals to figure this one out. So what we've ended up with is a car that you have to manually roll yourself and it can turn into a plane that you have to manually fold the wings out. <sighs> the instructions are so misleading. I thought this was actually a cool toy, but it's just as bad as the other one. I'd be more than happy to make these illegal just because they're awful. I'm glad we got to smash that bunny though. So that about does it for the second episode of Pen Pals. I really hope that you've been interested so far and that you might even want to be a part of the show yourself. I'd like to thank Arrow for writing in and being a part of episode two. You seem to really love the arts and are quite passionate about them. I'm really glad that you have those things in your life that you're able to see and be a part of so frequently. It's really hard to get a career in that nowadays, but I hope that if that's what you're wanting to do, you'll be able to do that someday. Maybe you'll end up being a museum curator, or even a contributor. Just a reminder guys, I save every letter that I get, and everyone who's featured on the show gets a place on the globe. If I'm able to pen even just 10 countries, I would consider Pen Pals a major success. So far, I've got two, so I'm one-fifth of the way there. If you'd like to be a part of this project, shoot me a letter and let me know what life is like in your corner of the world. You can send your letters to Nate at P.O. Box 642, Broad Beach, Queensland, 4218. 
and if you're outside the country, be sure and put a little Australia at the bottom. I've said this in my other videos as well, but if you don't want to be featured, please just let me know in your letter. This week's comment catalyst is how many countries have you traveled to? When I packed up and moved down to Australia, it was actually the first time that I had ever even been on a plane before. What about you? Talk with everyone in the comments below. Anyway folks, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.